हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर कुलभूषण चंदेल फ्रॉम हिमाचल प्रदेश यूनिवर्सिटी शिमला टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल कंज्यूमरिज्म फ्रॉम पेपर मार्केटिंग मैनेजमेंट सो द स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स सी व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस मॉड्यूल we will be describing the concept of consumerism we will explain the consumer movement in india you will know the problems faced by the indian consumers you will also be knowing the steps taken by the government for consumer protection and finally we will know the main provisions of consumer protection act 1986 let's start from the introduction itself that uh, what is the concept of consumerism with the introduction of industrial era the society passed from the custom to contract and in 19th century the advanced world adopted the individualism as its social philosophy which required in stating free competition in business activity and sanctity of contract was the main word for the makers of the law but now in modern society the main limitations faced by the competition in the retail market for consumer goods are the advertising which is made with an aim to inform consumers and also to limit competition ignorance of the buyer in the rapid technological advancement restrictive trade practices covering wholesalers and manufacturers they all are they all are the basic features of uh, uh, indian market itself wholesalers manufacturers they are also covered in this very particular act the stride of the technology has increased the difficulties of the consumers along with the opportunities for the protection of consumers the government has taken several initiatives the rights available to the consumers are right to safety right to be informed right to choose and right to be heard consumerism suggests different images for different people like campaigning for consumers awareness consumers to be made aware that they can decide for themselves what is right or what is wrong marketers industry government and public are all aware of the impact of the consumerism on the economy of the nation and its well being too the consumer protection act 1986 was an important legislation passed by the government of india for ensuring that a proper system is established for the protection of consumers rights and for the redressal of consumer disputes in this act there was a provision made for the establishment of the consumer councils and other authorities for the settlement of consumer disputes this act applies to all goods and services and is applicable to whole of the india except the state of jammu and kashmir the act provides for the establishment of two councils namely central consumer protection council and state consumer protection council the government of india celebrates 24 december every year as national consumer day since the enactment of this act on 24 december 1986 15th march is observed as world consumer right day every year as defined by the philip kotler when we are just uh, defining the meaning of consumerism 
he defined consumerism as an organized movement of citizens and government to protect the rights and enhance the power of buyers in relation to the sellers. George A. Steiner and John F. Steiner they defined consumerism uh, in a following manner. They stated that uh, consumerism is a movement desired to improve the rights and power of consumers in relation to the sellers of products and services. It protests movement of consumers against what they or their advocates see as unfair, discriminatory and arbitrary treatment. Consumerism is as old as business but has taken a new dimension and thrust in recent years. Consumerism does not mean that caveat emptor means the let the buyers be aware is replaced by caveat benders means let the sellers be aware. It does mean, however, that protecting the consumer is politically acceptable and that the government will survey consumer demands for better treatment and respond to them with new guidelines for and regulations over business. Consumers here are exploited by the unethical uh, marketers and even consumers are becoming victims of poor quality product when we are just talking about consumer movement in India. The market was filled with a huge variety of product which lead to difficulty for the consumers to ascertain the quality of products while buying it. Even the marketers try to capitalize the situation by resorting to unfair and unethical trade practices, black marketing, unsafe consumer products, hoardings and so on. In order to avoid the problems of consumers, there should be active participation in consumer protection activities by marketers, government and consumers. If we say that consumers should be aware about the fact that what their rights are, definitely they will not be exploited. We are talking about various laws, but again, up till the extent we are not awaring the customers about their uh, rights, how comes they will be in a position to know that against these unfair practices, we can go to the certain uh, agencies for their protection itself. The Indian consumer is facing various problems. The main problems which are faced by the Indian consumers are the scarcity of essential commodities occurs very recurrent in India such as uh, black marketing, hoardings, etc. Many consumers become easy victims due to lack of adequate information and familiarity with some new product features due to unawareness amongst the consumers, illiteracy level and uh, limited information which encourages marketers to develop indifferent attitude towards their customer is another problem which is faced by the Indian consumers. The consumerism is uh, in its initial stages and thus not well organized and developed to which is another problem which our uh, Indian consumers are facing. Phases of consumer movement in India. The consumer movement in India passed through with various phases. It starts from awareness phase. In this stage, the consumers' unions 
start mobilizing the membership and makes an attempt to raise the issues of consumers' interest and fight for awarding the fundamental rights of the consumers. In this fight, the emphasis is given on establishing consumer as an important factor of economic activity. The second step in this phase, that is the consumer education phase. This phase can also be called as an enlightenment stage in which the consumers, they are educated with regard to their rights. In this phase, the whole role of union has become more dominant and the type of activities undertaken are varied and multiple. At present, most of the unions are working at this stage. Their task is to create awareness about consumers' rights and to train them so that they could exercise their rights in the best possible manner. The unions try to lift, uplift the status of the consumers by providing them legitimate protection by forcing the government to enact various laws for the consumer protection. On one side, it tries to attract, educate and train consumers in urban areas. At the same time, it tries to organize rural customers also. Thus, in, state of, uh, in a state of uh, enlightenment, the union try to enlarge their activities in all spheres of life. Their role is very important whether the consumers they are of urban areas or they are of rural areas. The third stage is the advanced phase. The fight for consumer rights is an endless movement to seek justice, socio-economic equalities and to acquire a say in the process of economic equality and to acquire a say in the process of economic equilibrium. The development of consumer movement cannot stop at attaining a particular status, achieving a certain right for the betterment of consumers or to provide them with a facility of legal remedy is not the ultimate aim of consumer movement. Consumer associations has a long and unending journey of achieving a suitable status for the consumers and an exploitation-free and democratic economic system. The Indian consumers are facing various problems. Among different problems of Indian consumers, we can have the shortage of uh, essential commodities which remains. The shortage of essential commodities occurs very often in India and these imbalances in demand and supply leads to hoarding and black marketing, profiteering and corruption for which our Indian consumer becomes the victim of that. Majority of the Indian consumers are not aware about the various rights which are given to them. It is very important to say because Indian uh, government has uh, enacted various laws for the protection of Indian customers but the Indian customers, they are not aware about those various rights which they do have. Due to low level of literacy and other limited informations, they remain unaware about the rights which otherwise have been given to them. This persuades the marketers and traders to develop different attitudes towards their consumers. Many of the public services are provided by the public sector undertakings run by the governments to serve the public interest and 
the performance level of these public sector companies is very unsatisfactory. Rather, if we say that they are running in loss, majority of them, it will not be wrong. And consumers often have to play or to pay for the very poor services rendered by the public sector companies, which is another problem which the Indian consumers they are facing. The absence of adequate information and familiarity with some new product features that remain another problem with the Indian customers. Due to this, many consumers become easy victims and buy the sub-standardized products or inferior or defective products at the rate of the standardized products, which otherwise may be the cheating with the Indian consumers. The legal procedure of India is time consuming. It is a very big problem with Indian consumers because whenever any consumer is going to uh, the court of law, it takes a very long process to get justice out of that. And it is also a tiresome process which act as a barrier to consumers seeking the redressal for their grievances through the judicial system because they are not believing or they are not having the trust on this very judicial system. They do have their uh, perception in their mind that the legal procedure of India is very time consuming and they avoid to go to um, the court of law for their redressals of their problems. The consumerism process is still in infancy stage and hence not well organized to and dwelt to the level at which it is present in the 12 countries. In the 12 countries, the consumers are aware of their rights. They do have the instant, uh, say, legal procedure to protect, to redress their problems too. The consumers' protection laws are not being effectively implemented and enforced to achieve the objective of protecting the interest of consumers at laws. If we say that in India, a number of laws are there, a number of uh, provisions have been made in various laws as far as the Indian system is concerned. The two things are very, very important here, which work as a hurdle or barrier in, in, in the way of consumerism. One, either the consumers, they are not aware about their rights or the implementing agencies, they take a huge time to sort out the redressal problem to redress the problem of the consumers which they face time to time. The government of India has taken various steps to support its consumers. Various acts have been enacted. If we discuss few of them, uh, they are the monopolies and restrictive trade practices which is known as a MRTP Act 1969. It is replaced by the Competition Act 2002 later on. We have Industrial Development and Regulation Act 1951. There is another act that is Essential of Commodities Act 1955, Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1954, Prevention of Black Marketing and Maintenance of Essential Commodity Act, Sales of Goods Act 1935, Trademark and Merchandise Marks Act 1958, Agriculture Products Grading and Marketing Act 1937. To control the drugs uh, related problems, there is a, another act that is Drugs Control Act 1950. Indian Patent and Design Act mm, is there. Indian Standard Institutes Certificates Act 1952 is there. Standard Weights and Measures Act 1956 is there. 
Consumer Protection Act 1986 is there. Import and Export Control Act 1947 is there. Packaged Commodities Order Act 1975 is there. Price and Stock Display Order is there. The Drugs Act 1940 is there. Horn Trade Act, which is uh, uh, related to the development and its regulation, that is 1992 Act, that is also there. Consumer Protection Act 1986. The Consumer Protection Act 1986 is an important legislation passed by the government of India for ensuring that a proper system is established for the protection of the consumer's rights and the redressing of consumer disputes. In this act, there was a provision made for the establishment of the consumer councils and other authorities for the settlement of consumer disputes. This act applies to all goods and services and is applicable to whole of India except the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The act provides for the establishment of two councils, namely Central Consumer Protection Council and State Consumer Protection Council. Central Consumer Protection Council. The Central Consumer Protection Council is established by the central government, means the government of India, comprising of the following members. It includes the chairman, the minister of consumer affairs. Such members or such number of other officials and non-official members as may be prescribed in the law. The council can meet at any time as necessary but it shall meet once in every year at least. The State Consumer Protection Council it is established by the state government and it comprises of the following members. The minister in charge of the consumer affair in the state is the chairman of this very council. Such number of other officials and non-official members as may be prescribed by the state government. Such number of other official and non-official members not exceeding 10 as nominated by the central government. The state council can meet at any time as necessary, but it has to meet twice in every year. The object of this state uh, council is to protect the rights of the consumers within the state. The state council shall also establish district consumer protection council in every district of the state, the District Consumer Protection Council shall comprise of the collector as chairman and other members as prescribed by the state government. Objectives of the Act The main objectives of the councils or this Act are to protect the rights of the consumers. It may be explained as under, it do provide the right to be informed about the quality, quantity and other necessary informations so that consumer could be protected from unfair trade practices. Right to be protected against marketing of the goods and services which are harmful for the society is the another object of this very particular act. Right to be assured, right to be heard and assured that the consumer disputes shall be heard at appropriate consumer councils. Right to seek redressal against restrictive trade practices that is also been given to the customers and right to consumer education. The customers must be provided, the consumer must be provided with all the informations to educate him which otherwise he is requiring time to time. 
whenever we are talking of uh, consumer dispute redressal, redressal agencies, the act provides for the establishment of the following consumer disputes redressal agencies. They are available at district level, state level and national level. The District Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission is established at the district level by the state. It is also known as uh, the district form. The state government establish this very commission in each district of the state. The State Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission work as, at the state level. It is also known as a state commission which is again established by the state government. While at the national level, National Consumer Disputes Redress, Redressal Commission works. It is established by the central government means the government of India which deals with the disputes at the national level. Any customer can file any kind of uh, uh, his grievances to the district consumer dispute redressal commission. If he is not happy with the decision, satisfied with the decision, he can go to the state consumer dispute redressal commission. And again, if he is not satisfied with the decision given by the State Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission, he can approach to the National Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission. The person who is applying for the uh, State Commission against the dispute, uh, District uh, Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission's decision, he can apply, he is to apply within the 30 days of such decision which uh, the district level consumer commission is giving and in case if the consumer is not satisfied with the decision at the state level again he can apply within 30 days to the national consumer dispute national commission for his grievances or the complaint complaints which he is having in case if the consumer is not satisfied with the order of the national consumer dispute redressal commission even then he is again having, a, having the option to go to the Supreme Court. But in each cases, he is, he is again to apply uh, against these orders within 30 days of such decision which the National Consumer Dispute Wrestle Commission is giving. He can go within 30 days to the Supreme Court. If we say that uh, for the redressal of the consumer uh, grievances, right from district level up till the Supreme Court, we are having the agencies to look after all kind of, uh, say, uh, the redressal of uh, the consumer disputes, definitely it will be right. The, but the question is there that the customer has to be aware about his rights, where he can go and how much time he required to go within that very particular limit of the time he is to apply to the further court. For that the consumer education is also necessary. Otherwise if he is ignorant about all these educating systems with regard to his rights, again these all time, types of uh, agencies cannot just give any kind of uh, solution for his grievances. We have consumer dispute redressal agencies which ensure the implementation of the Consumer Protection Act efficiently and effectively. The Act provides for the establishment of the following consumer dispute redressal agencies. There is a District Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission. It is also known as district form. It is established by the state government in which the Consumer Protection Act 
that is enforced at the district level. It is available in each district of the state. The State Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission is there. It is also known as State Commission as established by the state government. It is at the state level. There is a National Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission. It is established by the central government, means the government of India, which deals with the disputes related to the whole of the country or say at country level. At present, there are 34 state commissions and 588 district form beside national commission. The state governments are responsible for district form and state commissions. The central government means the government of India established the national commission in 1988 at New Delhi. The government of India celebrates 24 December every year as National Consumer Day since the enactment of this act on 24 December 1986. Besides this, 15 March is also observed as the Consumer World Consumer Rights Day every year. So the students, let me now discuss or summarize what we have learned from this module. Traditionally, the sellers or marketers were dominating as consumers, had very little choice of products and services. This has resulted in dishonest and trading activities and like cheating the naive customers. As per them, the buyer's responsibility to ensure and confirm about attributes, the concept of caveat emptor, which focus on the let the buyer be aware about the fact was also there. This attitude of marketers made exploitation of the customers through restricted and unfair trade practices. Consumers were harmed in many ways by marketers like charging high price, restricted and unfair trade practices and poor services. The situation of Indian consumer is bad due to lack of illiteracy, information and inability to understand complexities of the market. The market was filled with a huge variety of products which lead to difficulty for the consumers to ascertain the quality of products while buying it. Even the marketers tried to capitalize the situation by resorting to the uh, unfair and unethical trade practices, black marketing, unsafe consumer products, hoardings and so on. The Consumer Protection Act 1986 was an important legislation passed by the government of India for ensuring that a proper system is established for the protection of the consumer rights and the redressing the consumer disputes. In this act, there was a provision made for the establishment of uh, consumer councils and other authorities for the settlement of consumer disputes. This act applies to all goods and services and is also applicable to whole of India except state of Jammu and Kashmir. This act provides for the establishment of two councils at the central level, that is Central uh, Consumer Protection Council and at state level there is a State Consumer Protection Council. Uh, we, have, we have also discussed that at present there are 34 state commissions and 588 district forms beside national commission to redress the consumer disputes. The state government are responsible for district form and state commissions whereas 
the central government which established the National Commission in 1988 New Delhi is responsible for redressing the consumer disputes at national level. The government of India celebrates 24 December every year as a national consumer day which remind us time and again that what our rights are there and how we can be protected by way of uh, the legislation we can just remind ourselves time and again every year.